Hello. <clears throat> Today, <clears throat> I want to start a sort of a marathon, basically. It begins with the film I'm going to talk about today. You know, particularly starting like a, a three, it'll be a three uh, films overall that I'll talk about over the next few weeks. Uh, and it all begins with the masterpiece, The Room. Written, produced, directed, and starring Tommy Wiseau, the one and only man who could ever bring such a uh, phenomenon to, uh, well, just to all of us, you know, uh, as people generally know, Tommy Wiseau is an all-around American guy. He uh, lived in Europe for some time, but then, you know, grew up in Louisiana. And he came to California and uh, did like a San Francisco. And he eventually uh, uh, made his own film. Uh, it stars uh, Greg Sestero. Uh, oh, and Tommy plays Johnny. Greg Sestero plays his best friend, Mark. Juliet Danielle plays uh, uh, Johnny's future wife, uh, <clears throat> Lisa. Philip uh, Heldeman plays Denny, a guy uh, who uh, Johnny wants to adopt, but, you know, he was basically a, a legal, uh, like 18 when he first met him, and so he's paying for uh, Denny's uh, tuition uh, to college. And then there's Caroline Minot, uh, Minot as uh, Claudette uh, Lisa's mom now you know this film you know it's uh, about a hundred minutes or so rated R for sexuality language and brief violence um, this is a uh, truly a one of the uh, best films of all time because, you know, it's just a masterpiece through and through. The dialogue and characters. and I don't know if I could really do it justice. The only thing I could really say would be... Um, you really have to watch this film to truly understand. It's a real experience you have to watch. And if you don't... If you haven't seen it, it's, you know... I don't know. But to really tell you you're missing out uh, can you really trust anyone a very poignant question because you know Johnny is a guy who works at the bank um, promotion is supposed to be due for him uh, everything seems to be great with him and his future wife Lisa the two of them make love you know he likes to have sex with her navel. Interesting choice, you know. Only somebody, somebody like uh, Tommy Wiseau, a true auteur, would ever think to do such a thing uh, for the film. But, you know, not many people are daring, especially these days. I will say, you know, when it comes to, like, uh, uh, directors, uh, filmmakers that I uh, really like, you know, like Christopher Nolan these days, you know. You know, you never see such a thing uh, like that happen. Oh, <clears throat> his films generally don't have sex, though. So I've heard Oppenheimer will have some sexuality, I believe, and nudity. So, who knows? Maybe some uh, naval lovemaking uh, is still in the cards for uh, Nolan. Uh, I mean, we can only hope that he will be just as daring as Tommy Wiseau. know but yeah everything seems to be fine you know uh from the outset but then all of a sudden you know lisa she um <clears throat> says she's in love with mark uh greg sestero's character and uh played by uh tommy Liso's best friend but uh she really you know she's like you know i I don't love Johnny anymore. And then uh, her mother, uh, 
it's like it's not right, you know, and you know, I mean, uh, she shouldn't be doing all of this. And she's gonna hurt Johnny, and she cannot provide for herself because uh, Johnny's job is very secure. Um, and uh, Mark eventually, you know, they uh, he comes over. They're talking, and, and he's just uh, confused. You know, they're gonna talk, and then she's starting to just, uh, <clears throat> hit on him, and so he, uh, you know, he's just uh, uncomfortable, wants to get out, but you know, she convinces him to stay, and at which point they make love on the spiral stick staircase, uh, which. Uh, leads to their bedroom, but, you know, it's like they're just so uh, in the throat of passion, of love, they just can't make it up there, you know. They have to do it now on the stairs, otherwise it's just... <laughs> otherwise everything would just probably just be destroyed in the bedroom, and then take quite a while to get everything as it was uh, beforehand. Uh, especially so if Johnny doesn't know what happened. And, you know, and Mark, you know, he, you know, while he doesn't make love to uh, uh, Lisa with uh, uh, with Lisa's navel, he's able to, you know, do it with his pants still on. You know, it's something you don't really see all the time. Still, still daring uh, decisions by uh, <clears throat> Tommy Wiseau. And I believe also that input was uh, given by uh, Greg Sister. So he's clearly... Uh, given a, 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 a real brilliance to the character of Mark. And he says that he believes, like, um, <clears throat> because we don't know too much about Mark. You know, we see the friendship of Johnny and Mark. You know, they're discussing things and, you know, playing the football three feet apart and, like, like jogging, running. And, uh, drinking coffee and all these things uh, that normally happen with everyday life. And it's just um, <clears throat> truly amazing uh, with what uh, with what all happens um, with this uh, with these two. Especially since, you know, Mark has a secret that, you know, doesn't want Johnny to find out because it would ruin uh, not only their friendship, but <clears throat> it would just destroy Johnny to know his future wife has been having an affair with uh, Lisa. Uh, uh, real heavy stuff, you know, so uh, it's drugs uh, reference, you know. Denny owes a guy... Uh, Chris R. Uh, money that he got drugs off of, and so um, <clears throat> that uh, almost turns deadly because um, gets a gun put, uh, you know, pulled on him, and just uh, is yelling and needs, he's like, "Where's my money?" But luckily, you know, Johnny and Denny uh, are uh, come into the nick of time and are able to subdue Chris R. And Mark grabs the gun. The backstory that uh, Greg Sestero gave for Mark was that he, you know, uh, like he's like an undercover cop. And so, <clears throat> because this would explain how, uh, after a while, uh, they come back up uh, to the roof to consult Denny to try and get also Claudette off of uh, off of her because she's like you need to be. Uh, ganged up on because you're doing drugs and that's not right and uh, Lisa's trying to comfort Denny but also trying to make him the point that you know you, you know you know better than to do that then Johnny gives the same sort of uh, <clears throat> uh, a little talk to Denny that he knows better and uh, Denny uh, 
you know, it's just truly a, 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 a amazing scene, just a marvelous from beginning to end. It's like, you know, words, uh, <coughs> words aren't enough for scenes like that. And, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, ruin the rest of the film because it is an experience. You need to know what it is yourself. And well, I haven't seen it in the theater myself personally. I know a lot of people love to go and throw spoons, you know, uh, plastic spoons, because, you know, rather than taking pictures of uh, the various characters for the uh, film, you know, uh, in picture cases, you know, in case like for pictures or what have you, uh, of like, you know, it's Johnny, there's Denny, uh, Lisa, Johnny and Lisa, Mark, with all their friends, you know, there's more characters, but, you know, I guess I should also point out the famous, uh, <clears throat> uh, flower shop scene, where, you know, he marvelously, you know, Tommy Wiseau directed and performed such a, an amazing performance and gives such impeccable line readings where, uh, Johnny goes to get flowers for Lisa. You know, needs a dozen red roses. And then the woman who's there at the uh, flower shop looks and says, Oh, hi, Johnny. Didn't know it was you because, you know, he had his glasses on, sunglasses. So, you know, you wouldn't know Johnny if he, uh, you know, you know, without, if he had sunglasses on, you wouldn't know that was Johnny until he took him off because Johnny's an all American guy, just like Tommy Wiseau. So, you know, just blends right in, you know, and, uh, uh, she gets him the, uh, flowers, he pays for it, and he at, uh, tells her to keep the change, he says, hi, doggy, because there was a little dog there, and so, you know, uh, they, he thanks, uh, thanks her, and says, bye, and then leaves, and, uh, which then goes to the scene where, Lisa ordered pizza for them, and then after a while, it's revealed that after waiting months, Johnny did not get his promotion, and then uh, he uh, you know, Lisa and Johnny then uh, are drinking, even though Johnny doesn't drink, but <clears throat> you know, because you know she's able, he's able to convince uh, Lisa's able to convince him that she uh, that he should drink. You know, if he loved her, she'll he'll have a drink, and he does. And you know he gets, you know he's tired, he's wasted, he loves Lisa. Then they make love again, which uh, after a while you know recycles scenes from uh, the first sex scene because or footage from the first sex scene because you know that's just how. Uh, on the pulse uh, and cutting edge that Tommy Wiseau is, you know, people still haven't really caught up to this brilliance, unfortunately. And um, you know, and then Johnny is upset that it's soon Lisa's spreading rumors that yeah he hit her, like when he was drunk, but she didn't do that. But you know, he then talks to Mark on the roof, and they're just talking and. Mark's there thinking because of his affair with Lisa and tells a, an amazing story uh, or, a, or a primarily sad story though I guess it's sort of amazing because of uh, Tommy Wiseau's brilliant performance and his reaction to uh, the story that uh, um, Mark tells to Johnny or Mark uh, knew this girl who had a dozen guys, and one of them found out about it, beat her up so bad she ended up on a, in a hospital on Guerrero Street, to which uh, Tommy then, as Johnny, has the uh, uh, appropriate response. <laughs> what a story, Mark. And, uh, you know, with such a dark and... Uh, 
unfortunate story being told. We need some light, uh, lightness. So some light laughter is very well needed in a moment like that. It's just, you know, it took a turn, and we need some some levity to be like something like lightness to be lifted. Essentially, you know, we need something to make us smile again after such an unfortunate story. But, you know, I could keep going on and on, and I know I always like, you know, you should uh, watch this film cause, to experience because you really do, you know. <clears throat> I think it's a complete shame this got overlooked by the Academy. It's a sin on there uh, that is marked on them. You know, Tommy Wiseau should have been up for Best Picture, Director, Original Screenplay, and Actor. Juliet Danielle, Best Actress, Greg Sestero, Philip Heldeman, Heldeman uh, up for uh, Best Supporting Actor. I think Greg Sestero would have won over uh, Heldeman, but, you know, and Heldeman was great in this film, you know. <clears throat> the rooftop scene with Chris R., uh, that's worth a nomination, all, honestly, but... I think because of the transformation that Greg Sestero goes through with from first part of the film has his beard. But then part way through, about the halfway point when they're all gonna well they're all dressed up in their tuxes, which you think is gonna be, you know, for the rehearsal for the wedding with her friend Peter, who always plays psychologist with him, uh, who then leaves but is replaced by Stephen later at the end of the film because the actor playing uh, <clears throat> who, who, who was originally playing that part, he had to leave because of another film. Or Peter, yeah, Peter, you know, Peter, the actor who played Peter had to leave. Uh, sorry, there's just so much in this film that is amazing, but you know. Such a transformation that uh, Greg Cicero goes through with that, from, from beard to clean-shaven. No doubt would have given supporting actor, give the edge to Greg Cicero. And then, you know, Carolyn Monette as a... Carolyn Monette as Claudette for supporting actress, you know. Original score, like original song. Like you're my rose. Uh, just amazing. Just in cinematography and just yeah, just really amazing film. Honestly, you know. And, uh, the other films I want to talk about is one is uh, right here, uh, which I have the book. You know, the Disaster Artist. My life inside the room. The greatest bad movie ever made. You know, people call this the so bad it's good film. Is it worth that title? I don't know. It's a real masterpiece, though. So, you know, whether you think it's truly deserving of such a title, I don't know. Especially when the Academy uh, didn't yet at all acknowledge it. Especially when... Uh, Look, you know, Return of the King came out that year, won every Academy Award it was up for. That was a very, very good film, great film. Is it The Room? No, unfortunately, Peter Jackson couldn't have made a masterpiece like The Room. Only Tommy Wiseau could. But this book, you know, next week I will talk about the film of this. I already talked about it years ago, but, you know, I'm going to revisit this because it's been a while and very good film and uh, you know it's been a while since I've read this but uh, yeah there's a uh, young Greg Sestero and Tommy Wiseau San Francisco 1998 I had known Tommy for one month. And, uh, yeah. I got the book after, uh, 
around the time this film was coming out, so I don't have the original uh, cover, but, you know, I have uh, the audio book on Audible, and it's great because Greg Cicero narrates the book because, you know, this is his book, and also Tom Bissell helped him write it with a new introduction by James Franco because he played Tommy Wiseau. His brother Dave Franco plays Greg Sestero in the film. And here is, is a Kyle Voigt as Peter and Greg uh, Ellery as uh, <clears throat> Peter's replacement, Stephen. Separated, separated at birth? Probably not. But you never know. at the premiere of The Room. Just an excellent film. And, and the book is excellent, too. Really gives a good uh, analysis on uh, Greg's life a bit, about his career, as well as meeting Tommy and how the making of the room basically came about from his perspective. And then also, just for a good measure, I have this book, The Room, The Definitive Guide. You know, any fan of The Room should have this book, you know things you'll need to know. It's about spoons, plastic spoons, tuxedos and costumes. You know, you know they play football, you know, in their tuxes out in the, in the alley. Make sure to be three feet apart also, but, you know, really groundbreaking stuff. Um, yeah. People say this is the Citizen Kane of bad movies. I don't know about that. Citizen Kane's great, but is it the room? Can you go and see a screening of whatever they have Citizen Kane? Throw the football around three feet apart. Then throw uh, plastic spoons whenever you see the, those picture frames. I keep... I, I know I didn't really say that correctly before, but picture frames. I didn't want to have the pictures of people like... Johnny, Lisa, Mark, Denny, and Claudette. But instead of pictures of just spoons, every time you see that, you throw spoons. Can you do that with Citizen Kane? I don't believe so. I think you'd get kicked out. And you know, people just wouldn't understand what you're doing. But with The Room, you can have such an experience. Again, I have not seen it on the big screen. Who knows? Maybe that will happen at some point. You know, it is the 20th anniversary of this film, which is why I am making this video. But also, when it, I have the Blu-ray, of course, and uh, inside when you get it, you will be greeted with this. A picture of Tommy. TommyWiseau.com. And also on the back, it is Tommy Wiseau underwear. Got a trunk, a brief, boxers, brief open, boxer open, sizes and such, just really great stuff. I mean, you know, you can have Tommy Weissel underwear if you really want. And then something that doesn't, you don't get to see much with Blu-rays or DVDs much anymore made today, a scene selection for the film. That way, you know, you can... If you've seen it already many times, you can now skip to your favorite parts. And without having to go to the menu again. 
And on the back there is the roommovie.com where you can get shirts. Like, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Or Johnny, uh, or Tommy Wiseau demonstrates his uh, inner James Dean as Johnny in a, in a moment like that. In a very pivotal moment in the film. And then also click to buy direct for the room uh, hoodies as well as uh, other cool stuff. And apparently the DVD has some cool uh, stuff like uh, certain like uh, interviews and such that you know like an interview that isn't here on the on the uh, <clears throat> Blu-ray unfortunately so who knows, maybe at some point I'll get the DVD also. Here is the disc. But on the inside, there is... Hi, doggy. And then... I don't want to necessarily have to get it out of here, because, well... Sometimes those are uh, these little, uh, they're not always the easiest to get back in. Sometimes they want to be a little difficult and that's always annoying. But yeah, that is the masterpiece. <clears throat> the Room. Uh, I hope that uh, you have appreciated the fact that I uh, did my best to not spoil it if you haven't seen this film. Does it deserve to be called, considered a so bad it's good film? I don't know. Some people are just cruel and don't understand uh, a masterpiece like this. But anyway, that is my uh, overall discussion of The Room. What do you think about this film? Is it a masterpiece or not? Do you think it's so bad it's good? Or uh, are you just one of those people that just don't like it? And if so, why? Anyway, uh, I wanted to give you my real honest opinion on how this is an excellent film, a true masterpiece, and um, yeah, it is fantastic. It's a fantastic experience. It's one that is something you really need to watch and experience, because honestly, there's only so much you can go into with this film, and uh Next week, I might be I might be doing just that because of, you know, the disaster artist and also having read and heard the uh, audio book of the of the of this book. Be some cool insight uh, and to rewatch and to <laughs> revisit this film again. So, uh, yes, uh, thank you all for watching this let me know what you think about this film and then or in the comments you can't really write in the description i can you can't um but anyway let me know what you think of this film hope all of you are doing well hope you're all having a great day hope you're having a great week and i will see you all next time take care